Hello, this is Noreen Crone Finlay from TottyTalksCrafts.com and CroneFinlay.com. This video is all about weaving a sun hat for the little woven bears that I designed for the summer weaving um, challenge for the summer of 2022 based on um, my innovative weaving on the frame loom book and uh, working with the saffron loom. Now the um, the sun hat works not only for the um, woven teddy bears, it works for carved wooden bears and pandas, carved wooden pandas, they like it a lot too and carved wooden dolls, these are all dolls and bears that I have uh, designed and carved and of course that classic of standard doll kind the Barbie so this hat is a kind of universal for smallish uh, dolls teddy bears and pandas so the I'm going to just I'm going to clean my space up here a bit and be right back If you don't have a, a Murex Saffron Loom or a copy of Innovative Weaving on the Frame Loom by me, then go to the Murex website, click on Shop and go to the Starter Kits and scroll through until you find the Noreen Starter Kit. And that will include the loom, the sandy stand and a copy of my book Innovative Weaving on the Frame Loom. Now, I usually, when I'm weaving, I use the sandy stand and weave with the loom uh, held vertically in place. But while I'm filming, I, I lay it flat. It's just so much easier to film that way. Now, um, the, uh, the crown of the uh, hat is woven with uh, the loom set up to six inches. So when I say it's set up to six inches, I mean the lower set of pegs are six inches from the upper set of pegs. And the crown and the brim take a kind of an unusual warping method. What I'm going to be doing, I'm going to measure out about a six or so inch length of yarn and that will be just a tail end that gets used after the weaving is done then I'm going to loop over so it looks like the letter P then I'm going to fold that loop over reach through pull up and open up oh I did that wrong huh, let's start that again okay so I'm going to take my this and okay so I want to be pulling up on the the longer end, <laughs> right? Okay, so I reach through and pull up, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my um, loop so that I can place the end on one uh, peg and take it up to the next peg. Then I'm going to snip my ends and snip that end and I want a nice long end that I will um, be using to um, weave in and fill out the hat and the next I will repeat across the loom for a grand total of three sets of the, whoops, that one is going over two pegs. I just want it over one. I'm going to tighten up on that one just a bit. It doesn't have to be tight, tight, but it needs to be firm. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing again. I am working with the um, with two strands of yarn and held together. And I'm looking for, I've lost the other end here. Where'd that other end go? Here it is. Okay, so 
I will do the same thing. I'm going to pull out a length that's about six inches. Make my make my loop reach through. So I'm pulling up the length of yarn coming from the ball. So the yarn, in order to have two sets of uh, yarn strands to, uh, held together, I'm taking a strand of yarn from the inside of the ball and a strand from the outside. So now I'm going to cut this set of warp strands off too. Like I said, this is a very unusual way to um, warp a loom, but there's a reason for method in my madness here. Um, believe me, I have woven many, many, many of the hats in order to get the most workable solution for the hats. So I've done three times with the, the slip knot routine. Snip that end off. And now, um, now I'm going to take a strand of yarn that is a couple of yards long. I'm just untangling. I have a yarn nest on the floor here and it's not a pretty sight. Okay, so I am pulling out a couple of yards here that I'm going to fold in half and snip. Oops, I'm going to have to stop this for a moment. That was an important phone call, so it uh, actually took me away from the studio for quite a while. I'm going to weave in the shed stick at the top of the strands and just push that up to the top. Now I'm going to take those strands that I had, I folded it in half, and I'm going to put the fold in the weaving needle and start weaving. So I will weave my needle in up against the shed stick and that gives me my first wo <laughs> row woven. And I will beat that down and now I will weave back across all six strands. And again, I'm beating it down. I'm going to weave across. Oops. And I'm weaving in those ends. And back. Now I'm just using my fingernails to uh, beat this down because I'm frantically looking around my workbench here and I do not have the fork in place. Let's just scoot that out of the way. And I'm just going to check and see. Let's come down a bit closer. So I'm going to be weaving pie shapes and uh, for the uh, the six inch length, uh, which is the for the crown of the hat, I'm going to weave six pie shapes. And so next, what I will do is I will weave over under uh, across, but, and push that in, I'm going to only go weave on five warp strands and back to the left hand side on five warp strands and I repeat that again just on five warp strands and I could still be using my shed stick even though I'm not using all the warp strands but beat that down and the next one there we'll go, use the shed stick. And this time I'm just weaving on four sets of strands and back.
and I repeat that so that I'm going to have two complete sets of rows going over four strands and next it is over just three strands. Repeat over three strands. And I just need to check my notes here. Yes, just down to, that's my, that's, I was just trying to remember if I went down to two strands, but I don't. Um, yeah, I'm just going to turn the page here and make sure. Because yeah, I write out all my instructions as I'm, as I'm doing the designing process. I do this all, uh, I'll show you how I do it. That's what it looks like as I'm working through so sometimes things get very complicated when it's all <laughs> scratched in and out and changed my mind so it gets pretty wooly all right so okay right there okay so that is my first pie shape piece and now i'm going to do the second pie shape piece going across on all six strands and back and I don't want to push um, these six strands um, into down into here because that will distort your uh, warp strands and be not what we want. They, the warp strands will get pulled up eventually, but not during the weaving process. Okay, so I'm pushing up. I'm, I'm, I'm holding my thumbnail in place so that I can beat those down. And this time it's just using five strands of warp. And I'm ready to join another strand of, of uh, weft. So I've already cut one here. And because I have this very convenient loop here, I can just, I have folded this strand of weft in half. I'm taking one end through and taking my ends and Stroking them through my fingers so that the fold of the new weft goes into the fold of the previous weft. And now I move my needle up the weft strands and carry on weaving. So I'm at five warp strands here and back on five. I keep picking up a little hitchhiker there and four and when I'm pushing my weaving down I'm holding that um, edge of the um, the six strands across with my thumbnail so that it doesn't scooch down and four and again four back. Now just three. And back. So I'm going to um, stop the camera and weave uh, four more of the little pie shapes which will then fill my warp. And I will come back to you when I have the six little pieces of pie in the crown of the hat. I've finished weaving the six pie shapes and um, they aren't all 
uh, like I wove exactly the same number of rows for each one, uh, but they don't look all that even. That's not to worry about. The I've uh, snipped the uh, yarn off of um, the the weaving, and now I'm going to pop the weaving off the loom and set the loom aside. Now I'm going to untie the um, the knots. Here, let's come down closer. I'm going to untie the knots in the warp strands at the lower edge of the weaving. Oh, and I had I had to tie on some more yarn. I didn't weave it in the ends in uh, while I was uh, doing the weaving. I tied a knot, uh, not a very tight one, because I'm going to undo that later and weave those ends in after um, I've done all the weaving in that shapes the uh, the crown of the hat. So I am just going to. Here, I will finish untying these two and then um, I'll come back to you. The crown is shaped by pulling on the warp strands. And so I'm going to um, pinch the, um, the second row of weaving and pull up. Actually, what I am, well, I'm, no, change that thought. Um, I'm going to pull on the second um, set of warp strands, which will automatically pull on the first set of warp strands and pull there. I'm going to pull that in and now I'm going to pull on the first set. And what's going to happen is as you pull on your warp strands, of course, you gather it in. So I keep moving down my warp strands and pulling on them to pull in and close those pie shaped gaps uh, that I left in the weaving. And you don't need to do too much pulling on the two outside ends. Not yet, anyhow. And I will keep bringing the ends around and I'm going to start stitching into the center of the hat at the crown. So I'm going to thread those ends of the warp strand into a needle and I go, I just check to make sure I'm going into the right channel. So center strands, center strands. So now I just go in and I nudge my needle in. Into that channel and I pull it through. It can be handy um, sometimes to use um, needle nose pliers if your needle gets hard to um, hard to move through. And I pull up quite hard on that center warp strand. I'm going to go through again. And that center is now really well secured. So I'm going to take this inside the hat and I'm going to pull the needle out of those warp strands and I'm going to pick up the thread the warp strands from the second set of uh, warp strands. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the first set. I'm going to thread them into the needle 
and look carefully to make sure. Okay, coming out of the second channel, going to go into the second channel of weaving. So in I go with my needle. Pulling it in, pulling up. This technique also works well if you want to weave a round basket or bowl. I keep working my way around this set of strands, this channel, until I have worked all the way back to the beginning. And I know it's the beginning because that's where the center back is. And I'm going to go a second time through. It makes a very firm fabric. Okay. All right, so I'm done with this strand, so I'll take that inside. Now I'll reach for the third strand of, of warp strands. Thread them in, and in I go. So I go one, two, three, and then in on the third. And you can see how it's uh, it's closing and shaping the brim of the hat, the crown. Pardon me, the crown of the hat, the top of the hat. So I just carry on around, and. I'm now um, that I'm on the third set of strands, I am starting to need to pay attention to how much I'm pulling in because what I want is to have a hat that's the, that the brim will be about three inches across. You can see how this hat that's finished Oh, no, it's actually about two inches across. How is this one? This one's two inches. Okay, excuse me. <laughs> so we're going to pull in not a whole lot more on this hat. So, you know, you're, you're pulling up hard to make sure that your, um, this is my second pass, that your um, warp strands are going through those weft strands and um, they're, they're going to um, make that um, very firm and but uh, be careful to not draw it up too much. If you pull it up too much you can um, pull it open and shape it some but it's better if you don't do it from the outset. So This strand goes down into the gap, push it out of the way, and on to the fourth set. So I'm going to continue um, working my way around with the, the, the fourth, fifth, and sixth sets of strands, and then it will look like this. And then I'll show you how I just weave the ends in inside to finish it up. So I'm just going to keep working my way around so that this will turn out like this so I can have it turn out like that. Okay, I'll be back to you in a moment. There, I've got the um, crown all um, pulled into shape and uh, the... It, <laughs> It actually looks like a jellyfish floating along with the, the war pins hanging out. So now I'm going to turn it inside out and I'm going to trim the um, 
where are my scissors? I'm going to trim um, the um, the war pins here, and now I'm going to. Uh, oh, and I'll also untie that knot that was holding the weft strand uh, in place. And I'm going to just weave my ends in. And you don't have to uh, go into exactly the same uh, um, um, you know, it was really important to be in the right uh, in the right channel with the when weaving the, the ends in to start. But on the inside, you just want to get those ends locked in place. And so it's okay if you hop down and take it through a couple of strands on the next channel over. And the um, the warp ends uh, that you're that you're weaving in now do tend to uh, like your weaving is pretty thick now, and so um, it can be tough to pull them all the way through. But um, that's when using a pair of pliers is kind of helpful. Uh, if uh, if you can't get your needle to go through nicely, then use a pair of needle nose pliers to pull them through. And I'm not going all the way around again. I'm just weaving my ends in to get them out of sight. And I'll get those next. Those are the where I joined the weft. So I'm just going to carry on until all my ends are woven in and the crown will be done. The top of the hat. Oh, I wanted to also show you something else that's kind of, if you wanted to, just for the fun of it, if you wove two of the, the crowns or the, the hat tops and sewed them together, it would be a ball. And I'll just show you that as soon as I finish weaving these ends in here. And of course, once I've woven all these ends in, I, I will turn it right side out again. Okay. Flick, flick, flick with my thumbnail. Yeah, the last little bit here can go this way. Then I will do um, the, the same thing, weaving in those ends from when I joined the weft. You just want to get them buried in so that they're not um, they're not uh, looking untidy on the inside of the of the hat. Hmm, that one looks like it could be trimmed just a wee bit more closely. And the hat now, I'm using um, um, cotton yarn. It's, uh, I think it's called 24-7 from Lion Brand. And so this is a number four medium weight um, yarn. And so you end up with a very sturdy hat. Okay, so now pop it back right side out and there's the top of the hat done. So I just wanted to show you if you wanted to weave a ball you could just stuff it and sew those together and you would have a woven ball. Okay so I will now warp up the brim. I've turned the loom on its uh, just sideways so that you can see that I have uh, put the extender rod in and I've set the 
um, the lower uh, combs um, uh, as far as I could get uh, apart. So it's just a, just a touch over 11 and a half inches apart. So for the brim, now, you know, you can weave the brim in the same color as the crown, or if you want, weave it in another color, contrasting. Um, when I, I guess it's better if I keep it this way for now. When I um, made, I made two of the slip knots so that I would have four strands of warp. Um, I'm calling them just four, even though I've got two strands of yarn held together as one. I treat it as if those two strands are one strand, so that's why I say it's just four. Um, when I made my slip knot, I made sure that my tails on the slip knots were longer than the distance that uh, from the one comb to the other. Um, and that's because the um, I will be using the same technique of, of weaving in uh, those ends and they have to go all the way around. Uh, the left edge, let's spin this, the left edge of the weaving will be the outside of the brim. The right hand side is the inside of the brim. Here the crown edge. Now I have uh, tied my um, my weft on and I'm going to be doing, I've got, because I have just the four strands, I will, rather than just doing two uh, rows uh, in each of the pie sections, I will do um, a total of three sets of rows. Oh, and if by chance your slip knot lives up to its name and slips and the warp strands get looser, then you can just pull on the ends to tighten them. So I'm going forward and back and that counts as those two passes count as one row. Now I am in doing the, whoops, my yarn uh, caught on the table. Uh, in doing the the pie sections for the brim, you um, the there will be three passes, well three full rows or which consist of one pass going that way, one pass going back and that gives me a row. And so I'm going to do three rows on four strands and three rows so first pass second pass equals one row three rows on three strands that gives me two rows first pass second pass so there's my three rows on three strands and now three rows Pass one, pass two, pass one, pass two, two rows, pass one, pass two, three rows. So I have worked three rows on four, three rows on two, on three, three rows on two, and that's the first piece of pie, the first wedge. So I'm now going to repeat that for a total of 12 of the pie slices. And so uh, each wedge, I'm going to, as I start the next uh, woven wedge, I will hold my um, thumb here when I'm pushing down this uh, next section because I don't want this pushed down into that gap yet. That will come after the weaving is completely done and the uh, warp strands will get pulled at that point. So I am going to uh, carry on weaving my slices of pie and I will have 12 wedges and when I reach the top of the 
of the weaving. And so I'm going to just carry on weaving those wedges now and I will come back to you when I have woven to the top of the loom. I have finished weaving the 12 wedges of the brim. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them off the loom, move the loom out of the way, and just like I did with the uh, crown of the hat, I'm going to start pulling on the warp strands here to uh, move the, the weaving down the warp strands and into shape. I do need to untie the, the knots here, of course, which makes the whole proceeding a lot easier. Okay, and this knot too. I'll use the needle to uh, just insert that needle into there and get the knot eased out and through. There we go. Okay, so now move the brim of the hat over and I'm going to start at the center and I'm going to use the uh, crown of the hat as the guide for how much I want to pull in. A little bit more. And I'll move the strands around. There we go. And then I'll work on the next one. And the uh, brim does tend to ruffle up when you're first uh, doing the pulling. And as you pull on the um, the warp strands, it does then calm down and lie down flat. Now I need to do a bit of shaping by hand to bring the to bring the stitches around and there will be gaps in the uh, that you can see here but that's okay because those are going to be filled by the the um, the stitching in process so I'm going to ask ask it to just please lie down a bit more and now just like I did with the crown I'm going to take the um, take the stitches through each of the uh, each of the channels. So the warp strand from channel one at the center goes through just channel one and then channel two goes through just channel two uh, and on it goes to channel four. So I am just going to start that process now and I'm not going to pull up really tightly on them because I want to be able to um, ease them in as I am doing the uh, stitching and shaping. I just want to make sure that the brim is going to fit and so so I'm not pulling on this strand as I ease it in. Um, I will encourage this one, the outer edge, to lay a little bit more flat and I'm going to just stitch these ends through the channel of weaving and come back to you when I've worked all the way around. As you can see the light is quite different now because the battery to the camera needed to be uh, charged and it takes hours to charge and so I thought while I was uh, waiting for the battery to charge um, I had the extra um, uh, crown done and so I thought well why don't I 
weave up a brim uh, in blue to show doing the hat in two colors. And I thought, well, and why not put a woven band uh, on as a hat band too? So this is um, just to say you can do so many things, possibly put some flowers on. So your little hat uh, can be one color or two or three or five. So I've finished stitching um, the, taking the ends, <coughs> excuse me, in through the uh, channels. And um, I also wove in uh, the, the ends from when the, I had joined extra weft. And so now all that remains is to sew my crown to my brim. And so what I do is I, um, I have uh, yarn still from the, the weaving of the hat, uh, of the brim. And so I just bring it up and I sew it together going in and out of the gap as which is how I always stitch weaving together is in and out across the gap so actually what I think I'll do is I'm going to sew it together with just one of the strands I'm going to drop that strand and sew it together with just one strand and I will just carry on stitching the brim to the crown and when I'm finished with doing that I will have a little hat and petit chapeau that looks just like this one does. So this is how to weave a hat for a teddy bear or a doll or a puppet or some other little creature. So, happy hat making!